I'm Anthony Thaxton. Today on Southern Sketches, we're traveling back in time over 10 years to these vintage programs that I produced in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Now we traveled across the South sketching and painting as we went. I think you're gonna enjoy the subject matter. So stay tuned right now for a vintage encore presentation of Southern Sketches. Hey, that's right, that's what we're drawing. Hey, next on Southern Sketches. It's time for Southern Sketches with Anthony Thaxon. On an early morning trip on Highway 49, I saw some neat scenery just north of Hattiesburg. It was of some old barns, some hay out in the field. This scenery was typical of an early southern morning on Highway 49. So as you'll see, we did some sketches of the early morning shots. The sketches that we did were an interesting study of the early morning sunlight effects here on Highway 49 in South Mississippi. We're going to take a break, but coming up next on Southern Sketches, we're going to do a watercolor sketch of a bunt cake baked by a dear friend of mine in Clinton. Don't you go anywhere. Anthony will be right back with more Southern Sketches. Hi, I'm Anthony Thaxton. I hope you're enjoying these special encore presentations of vintage Southern Sketches programs that I did back over 10 years ago. If you'd like to find out more, see additional programs, find out other offerings that we have and new exciting art releases, visit us at ThaxtonStudios.com. We have lots of interesting artists, we have world-renowned illustrators and painters who are sharing what they know, and I think you'll find some interesting stuff, so be sure and visit our website at BaxtonStudios.com. And now back to the vintage program of Southern Sketches. You're watching Southern Sketches with host Anthony Thaxton. Now in Clinton, Mississippi, 
Mary Jane Whitfield is known as the crazy art teacher who has the bottle tree and the weird pink flamingos in her front yard. But I know Mary Jane Whitfield and her husband MD as great friends. We recently stopped to visit with them in Clinton and Mary Jane had a beautiful cake on her counter. She actually even laid the tile of her countertop there and I just liked the scene so I thought I would do a painting of it. We started out normally like we always do, taping down the edges to have a nice clean white edge when you get through with the painting. It will make it look as if you've got a little frame to it, even if you haven't framed it, have a little white edge. And just some very basic rough sketch in pencil. I'm not gonna overdo the sketch. Um, we wanna get to the painting part as soon as we can. And when we start the painting, what we're going to do is basically I'm going to start with uh, the area that I'm just itching to get to painting and this happens to be the middle of the bunt cake there it's got the um, a section lying there one of, one of the biggest things about painting in watercolor is letting the color mix together now if you look at this picture of this cake um, there's a lot of color, a lot of reflected light, a lot of shadows, lights and darks. And if you can't just leave white for a light and black, add black for a shadow. You can, but that makes it kind of dull. So what I'm doing here is adding some good, strong, rich color. So these are the shadow sides. sort of the inside. In mixing watercolor, if you learn to work very quickly, you can do that and let the colors bleed together. So I'm mixing in some of this brownish orange color and you can see underneath there is already started to dry. There's still some wet parts. I'm adding clear water here where the um, it will the, le the more water you add, the lighter the color will be and I wanted it to be a little highlight there but you're mixing these colors together, letting it bleed together while it's still wet, and that gives you some neat variations there in color gradients. I never did get to get a piece of this cake to eat, by the way. I went back over to the Whitfield's house and it was gone, but that's okay. Okay, starting around here on the front side, um, some artists will paint all of their darks first and then all of their lights. I typically kind of will paint sort of trying to work on the whole painting at the same time, but it just prob it doesn't work out that way a lot for me. A lot of times I'll kind of paint my way around and when I get around, I've got a lot of it finished and then add just a couple of little details. If I went and tried to add details right now um, it, in some of these wet areas, they would just diffuse out so much. So little spots and specks, I've got to wait to the end. I'm just going to keep adding color kind of get some of these big shapes done. Okay, in leaving a highlight, you're gonna leave the white of the paper. In watercolor, um, you don't use white paint, so you're leaving the white of the paper anytime you have a white highlight. So what I'm doing is painting around that light highlight or any areas that I'm gonna paint a different color. You can see the light kind of reflecting on the cake there. I'm gonna leave that highlight but I'm also going to work quickly around that. I want, I want it to be smooth going up in there. So I'm gonna add all of these colors in this dark side. While it's good and wet, I'm having to work very quickly. Coming back, some of these other areas are still wet. Um, you want these colors to bleed together. While I've got that same color in my brush, I'm gonna go on and put a couple of areas over here let some of those colors mix. Look how dark it is around the edge of this cake. You're trying to trying to duplicate that and again not just by adding black but you can add strong oranges and real real dark reds to help with your shadow areas. It doesn't always have to be a blue or a black or a purple but the strong just your colors, your values, your lights and darks. Okay, adding some little zesty color here in a few of these areas. Yes, I use the word zesty. Very exciting. 
I like painting food. Painting food is is interesting. I like painting seafood that my dad cooks and things like that. Um, again, leaving another highlight over here. If you look at the cake, you'll see that highlight. And if you uh, work quickly and add these colors, when it dries, it will have a nice smooth effect. So I'm not staying exactly with what I see in the photograph. The photograph is nothing more than a starting point. I'm adding some clear water with a little bit of color in there to let that diffuse out where it's not this real sharp edge there. Coming back and adding some color. Now we're working very quickly. This is edited down just a little bit. Um, and you're not seeing me go over to my palette and clean my brush and that sort of thing. We tried to keep this into a manageable, watchable length, but um, I still work very quickly. You can see that we're adding the colors. Look, the cake is basically already done. When it's dried completely, we'll go back in and add some of the little specks and dots and holes. Uh, but for right now, we're working on the aluminum and kind of trying to get more of the painting finished. This is where it starts getting fun because you've got a large area of your painting done, kind of the center of interest, but now you're adding these little details around and it's a completely different color. Blue is the complementary color of orange and it just uh, really starts jumping out when you start putting that blue on the paper. It contrasts with that orange very well. This may or may not look like aluminum foil at the time, but when you get the whole painting finished, um, it still may not look like it but uh, it represents the aluminum foil. It's symbolic of the aluminum foil and the, the plate underneath. This is kind of a, a metal reflective surface and metals are interesting to do because it's kind of a reflection of the colors around it. It really doesn't have kind of its own color. It's reflecting all of these colors. So you can get a lot of color in there. You're thinking, well, that's a silver or gray cake pan, but you can really get a whole lot of color in there. I say that as I'm doing that dull color. There's some color, but adding that color, letting that kind of zing like that. I'm going to add some greens and some purples and some different things, but just to get that reflection, leaving a lot of whites in different places, letting that sparkle. You don't want to leave too many whites. going around the edges. Again, you leave the white of the paper for those areas. Um, if you accidentally paint over something, if you work very quickly, you can scrape an area out with a credit card or a knife. Um, just have to work quickly. Some of this, if you were to just zoom in on these areas here, would almost be like an abstract painting. adding clear water or what more water than paint so that side will be a little bit lighter you can see the cake is sitting there on the on the cake pan and it is reflecting on all these areas so we're gonna see some yellows and some tans and some oranges reflected in that light along with the big strong colors around it painting the tile tops. Interesting thing about this, Mary Jane and MD Whitfield, again, I took this photograph that I'm working from at their house and they had redone their kitchen and they let each of their children and their friends come and design a tile to go on their counter and we actually painted it and then she had them fired and uh, so they did their countertop with the tiles that we designed. This was before my son came along, I believe, but uh, we have a tile there for Amy and Anthony. The Whitfields are neat people. They've got a lot of collectible things around their house. So out of all those things to paint, I decided to paint the cake. Okay, here we go, painting another reflective surface here. It's gonna be a... Um, it's going to be showing the color. Look at the light there. 
the lights and darks it's reflecting the cake it's going to be showing that so we're going to try to get those lights and darks in there and if you work quickly they'll bleed together just watch these colors bleed uh, you're wanting this to be very um, almost ambiguous here on the side it, 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 you want it to fade out it's supposed to be just the reflective surface see it on the side of the the cake pan there it doesn't it's not supposed to be real strong and crisp um, so you're I'm going to let it be probably one of the looser parts of the painting you see me dabbing the end of my brush on the rag there what I do is when I have too much water in the brush I keep a paper towel or a rag there in my hand and I will dab the excess water off of the brush constantly getting clean water in your in the brush you don't want to have uh, muddied water now the colors that you see here I'm kind of exaggerating some of the colors uh, selectively choosing what to include what not to include but a painting is merely it's a different process than the photograph and your eye sees it differently and it's supposed to be different but um, I'm a very representational painter. I'm, I, if I'm going to paint a cake, I want it to look like a cake somewhat. But uh, I still like getting looser and looser here in some of these areas and just letting the color run. Boy, it's getting good, y'all. Stick with us. Hi, I'm Anthony Thaxton. I hope you're enjoying these special encore presentations of vintage Southern Sketches programs that I did back over 10 years ago. If you'd like to find out more, see additional programs, find out other offerings that we have and new exciting art releases, visit us at ThaxtonStudios.com. We have lots of interesting artists, we have world-renowned illustrators and painters who are sharing what they know, and I think you'll find some interesting stuff, so be sure and visit our website at BaxtonStudios.com. And now back to the vintage program of Southern Sketches. We're going to paint this candy dish back here, and this is probably... Um, one of the biggest challenges, glass and seeing through something like this in glass, this candy. It's a lot of just uh, unusual shapes and colors back there. So I'm gonna, for a while here, it's not gonna look very, uh, very good. It's gonna look kind of, someone standing over my shoulder wouldn't be able to understand what I was painting here, I don't think. But hopefully when we get through and add a couple of details, adding the name Tom's on the side and a couple of reflections on the glass, I'm going to scrape those out with the credit card. But just lots of color in there. And when you get through, if somebody still doesn't know what it is, it doesn't matter. It's still in the background. It doesn't have to absolutely represent something. But this looks up.
That's about all for this episode of Southern Sketches. We hope you've enjoyed the watercolor sketch and the sketching on Highway 49 in South Mississippi at the beginning of the show. We've got lots more to cover here in the South. I'm Anthony Thaxton. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Southern Sketches.